<laughs> and you don't even know what I sound like yet. You know, I was telling Brian before um, I, I was walking up the ramp there, and I said, I move around a lot. And I don't know if it's my ADD or ADHD or one of those things that they call, but I do it for two reasons. One, if I walk around, there's less a chance of you falling asleep. Oh, huge, 80%, goes up 80%. <laughs> but the other thing is, if I move around a lot, I'm a harder target to hit. <laughs> okay. But I do want to welcome you guys here, and especially some visitors that uh, have been very important to me in my life over the, over the years. And um, just brief, I actually attended here when I was a kid for maybe a month or two, and I actually went through the confirmation class. And if you've ever seen those back then, you would stand up and I had to say the Beatitudes. That was, that was comical. Because I would start out and I would say, blessed are, and the lady on the side would say, horn heart. heart. <laughs> But anyways, um, I didn't grow up going to church. Uh, my mom came here, she didn't like some things, and she uh, took off, my dad and none of us um, went to church growing up. Um, and this is a personal thing, but some of you may have heard this before. My mom would say, because she was forced to go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, she said she wanted us to grow up and decide if we wanted to make church a part of our life when we got older. Anybody hear that or it ever come out of your mouth sometime or you hear something say? Can I tell you folks, kids, if they don't get exposed to something, how are they going to make a decision for something? And I can tell you, I was in the Coast Guard, I was a really good Coast Guard guy in all ways. Some of the stuff I got involved in weren't very good, but I was a good Coast Guard guy. When I was 16, because my parents always took boat, boat trips, I'll, I'll shut up fairly quickly, but I went to a church camp at 16, and guess what I did the very first day I was there? What's that? Prayed. Prayed? Oh no. Got kicked out. I did. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> the very first day, I'm 16 years old, I think I'm pretty good. I find a girl and we start walking around holding hands because what else does a 16 year old boy do? And this young minister came up to me and he said, no bodily contact. I hadn't even been down to the pool yet. <laughs> I'm just walking around holding her hand. And he says, no bodily contact. I said. I'm holding her hand, I'm not, and please excuse me, I'm 16 years old, didn't go to church. I said I'm not jumping her. <laughs> so that little 22-year-old minister kicked me off the church camp. Now, I, I just want to leave you with a thought. Had that guy not been so legalistic and so judgmental, what if I had accepted Christ at 16, if he was more concerned about me and my own spiritual walk? What if I had accepted Christ at 16 and I wouldn't have had to get involved in all the stuff that I did in the Coast Guard? Because I'm sorry, Bill, I inhaled. Okay, so I had a rough life. So the reason I'm bringing this up is you, as especially as senior adults and grandparents, you could be the one that could lead your grandchild, nieces, nephews to Christ, and they don't have to go through the world. They can get to know Christ personally at a young age. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, now that I've either confused you or dazzled you or whatever it is, Carol is gonna give you the information, all the announcements. Good morning. The Oak Hill family and friends, can you hear me okay? Is the microphone on? Okay. Take a technical break here. Is it on now? Okay. Thank you. The Oak Hill family and friends summer picnic will be Sunday, August 11th. We will have the pavilion from 2 to 8 p.m 
and we plan to eat around 5 p.m. It will be at Bettler Park in Green. There will be a shuttle from the parking lot to the pavilion for your convenience. Hot dogs, condiments, and beverages will be provided. <coughs> we ask that you bring a dish to share. A sign-up sheet and maps to the park that show you how to avoid the roundabouts in green will be on the credenza in the back of the sanctuary. And we look forward to seeing you at the picnic. Also, for those of you who have not heard, Oak Hill can no longer accept paper and cardboard for recycling. The recycling company has removed the bins from the parking lot. The replacement of the fire alarm system is complete. Thank you to everyone who contributed to offset the $17,500 $17, expense. A total of $3,630 was collected. The Presbyterian women held their final Bible study of Esther several weeks ago, and the officers for the coordinating team were installed for 2024-2025. The Presbyterian women would like to thank Nikki Hetrick for serving as the moderator for the past two years. The officers for 24-25 include Roseanne Anderson, vice moderator, Nancy Kiplinger, coordinator for leadership resources, Linda Bowles, secretary, Dee Smith, treasurer. Uh, I will be the coordinating team monitor moderator and continue as the liaison to Open M and Project Rise, and Sue Wigington will continue as the birthday coordinator. The Presbyterian women also enjoyed a picnic supper and then a presentation about the 2024-2025 Bible study. Nancy Kiplinger introduced the Women of Christmas by Liz Curtis Higgs, the study will help us to experience the season afresh with Elizabeth, Mary, and Anna. The study books are available now, and they are $10 each. If you have not received your copy yet, please contact Nancy Kiplinger. Uh, the study will begin on Tuesday, September 24th at 3 p.m. in the Oak Room. Thank you all. You ever go to a church and you wonder when you're supposed to stand up and sit down? <laughs> I've been going here for what, five, six months? And they asked me to fill in today, which I guess, you know, I told them they got me at, you know, 1 800 to rent a pastor, you know, but you, you sit here and then you're supposed to take over the service and you sit there and say, well, when do I do stuff? So we're going to have a call to worship, then we're going to have music. Is that correct? Ooh, I got that right. Anyways, I found this and I thought it would be uh, encouraging. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul, I'll worship your holy name.
Well, it's time for the children to come down and we'll have a children's message. I had a request. I don't have a microphone up here except there. And I walk a lot of places. So I'm going to be a little louder maybe today. Do you want a microphone? Do I need a microphone? Or am I okay this way? I need one? Okay. I don't think I've ever had anybody say, you're too soft. <laughs> but anyways, because the kids are here, I have something special for you guys. Oh, that's okay. Hello, Dusty. Did it work? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask an adult first off to tell these kids what I have in my hand. So I'm going to go to Lee here and ask him, what is that? Is it a special one? There you go, Kennedy half dollar. This is what they call it. This is a 50 cent piece. It's always worth 50 cents. Sometimes it's worth more than 50 cents. Okay, so I'm going to want you to look at it. So if you can take that and look at it. So why they call it a Kennedy half dollar is because, because President Kennedy He's on this coin. So the nice thing about this coin is it's always worth 50 cents. A lot of times it's worth more. But I want you to look at the side of the coin and tell me if you see anything. What? I see ridges. Ridges? What was the old ship that had ridges? Pringles? Ruffles. Ruffles. Ruffles has ridges. Yes. Okay. But you're right, it has ridges. Does it have something else on it? Liberty, on the, well, on the side. If you look real close, you'll see like two different colors. Yeah, I see it. You see it? There's like, there's like um, the color of a penny and the color of a dime. Okay. What it is, is they wanted to make coins, as you guys know, and they didn't want to lose money on it. So instead of it being silver, they put these impurities, nickels and everything else, in there to make a 50 cent piece. That's right. So, that's why it has what's called impurities. It means it's not all silver. Why I ask you guys that we're talking about this, when you grow up, do you ever do things like not clean your room? Yeah. <laughs> not listen to mom and dad sometimes. Yeah, yeah, do stuff that you knew if mom and dad found out about it, you get in trouble. Yeah, I do that all the time. Okay. Those are those impurities. <laughs> that we have. And I can tell you when I was growing up, I can't believe my, my parents even kept me. <laughs> we were in the hospital so much because I tended to be a little bit of an idiot, you know, growing up, trying things that I shouldn't have or whatever. But that's our impurities. All of us have these impurities in us, even though God looks at us and says, yeah, but you're a Kennedy half dollar, you're pretty neat. He sees the good in us. Wow. I'm going to show you something else. And this is really good. I had to go buy one of these things. And I, a lot of people are buying these right now because they're afraid of the economy. So they're buying those silver, you know, there they are, dollar bills. Right? $36 for one coin. Yours is 50 cents. $36 for this coin. Look at you can pass around. But look at that coin. Is it a one dollar coin? Well, it's a it's a one ounce of pure soap, 99.9999, whatever it is. <laughs> but it's it's one ounce of soap, and it can go up in value. When I first thought I should invest in it, $23. Then I got it for $34, and now it's down to like $30 or $29. So it depends on how valuable people think this is. But that's pure silver. No. No. There you go. Impurities. This is what God wants to do with all of us. He sees us. He loves us. We're valuable to him. But he's saying to us, I can change you. I can help you change from impurities and that whole 50 cent piece. And when I'm done, you're going to look like this. And all we have to do is just...
just simply ask God, help me every day to be more like you want me to be. Amen. Help me, Heavenly Father, to listen to my parents, clean my room, whatever it is. Help me when I have unkind thoughts to other kids at school. Help me to listen to you because I want to be this. And I hope you, I wish I could give each of you one of these, but I can't afford it. But you can keep the 50 cent piece and look at it every day and say, I think I'm probably like this, but I want to be where Pastor Tim talked about. Pure soap. Thank you guys for coming. Amen. I, just, I really love this picture. Thank you guys. She's got a whole family. <laughs> Sounds good. When I was asked to fill in, they were saying, you know, you could do the, the service. I thought, oh, really? Uh, everything? And uh, so Ed stepped up and he said, at least let me do the prayer stuff. Definitely. So, thank you, Ed. sampling of our needs here, so if you could please. Okay, uh, is that better? Okay, sorry. Uh, if you could bow your heads and I'll do a sampling of our needs here right now. Um, Father God, uh, please be with Jim Parker, dealing with foot pain. Brian Timmerman, still recovering from surgery and having pain. Sherry Lawrence, also continued healing from issues that she's had with throat issues and thinking of uh, Dave and Sue Goff and their dads and their health needs. Ray Callie battling cancer please and be with her and we have Bobby Bobby Chalmers here today from North Carolina to see his brother Robin through the end of life dealing with cancer also. So please be with with that family and I have a cousin a niece Karen out in Tucson has sarcoma going through chemo right now and pray for their needs. For Marilyn Young, has some tests tomorrow. Help her to get through some struggles that she's been having here of late. For the Gunnels family and their grief, pray for safe travels for Brian and Allison. Help us, Lord, to live our faith. Do not fear. Do not worry. Do not hurry. Persevere. And if you would, please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
should have put an asterisk on this one to say, time to get up again. <laughs> you know, I, uh, uh, I've been in the ministry for probably 40 some years, probably as long as I've been a firefighter. I think it's on now, is that it? Is it on? Hello. Yes. Good. And I can try to stay here for a little bit, but I move a lot. But one of the things that I've, I've seen quite often with, with individuals in, that uh, uh, go to church, call themselves Christians, is I look for the joy. Because Christ was joyful. Christ, you know, he had to challenge the... Uh, uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, those individuals. But he was, I think he was, for the most part, a happy guy. Why? Because the kids liked being around him. Right? Kids and dogs. I tell people whenever I go to like yard sales and stuff, they have a dog and I pet the dog. And uh, I always say that I, I get along great with kids and dogs. It's just big people I have problems with. But kids and dogs are a good judge of character. They really are. Because if you're not a nice person, kids don't want to be around you. So I want you to think about that as you go into the world and you say, you tell people that you're a Christian or you go to church. Think about what they see, what they hear. And ask yourself, am I the best example? Am I like that coin? The best I can be with God's help? That's just something I wanted you to think about. Um, they wanted me to announce that the offering box in the back, the black box back, back there, if you have your offering, if you'd like to put that in the box today, that'd be great. If you're visiting today, we do have a $20 cover charge. So <laughs> just so you know. Good. I always pray about the messages that I give, and I always want to make sure that it's exactly what all of us need to hear. I don't do very many series. I don't get things sent to me from the, the greater, great beyond, the headquarters, the denomination, and use it. And I've been, um, I've been glad about that, that God's allowed me to do that. Because there's people, and I don't, after the message, if you want to come down and talk with me about something spiritual, I'll be down here. I don't usually stand at the doors. Because I figured God spoke through a donkey one time, and he can speak through me, and if I do what he wants me to do, that's all I need to do. But I always pray, and I ask, and I've prayed with people that are involved in the service today, before the service, that God will use us, and that every single one of us will leave here different than the way we came. And that's what I, I really pray, pray for, for you guys. Can we bow our heads? Father, I just thank you for this church. I thank you for... Um, the influence it was even for a short time with me as a child. And I just pray that you'll help them to realize the number of lives that have come through here and more than likely will be in heaven and their lives were changed because of this church. And the idea that I would actually someday end up bringing a message here, especially with the past that I've had, I just can't thank you enough because you got a hold of me at a time that I really needed you. And I know today that I didn't just hear about you, read about you. I really know you're real. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a passage that talks about a, a parent, a dad. And uh, he's got a son that's got some real serious issues. He's possessed by a demon, he's got epilepsy, he's got everything going on for him. He throws himself in the fire when he's possessed, he throws himself in the water because the demon's trying to, to destroy him. And I want you to put yourself in that dad's place. Or even as a grandparent, when you see your children and grandchildren struggling, maybe not to this extent, but you see them struggling with problems and issues and bullying and all this other stuff that kids face today. And I gotta tell you folks, the worst thing that I had to worry about, besides flunk and tests, <clears throat> which I didn't do that much, was walking home and there was this one kid in my area, well actually two of them, and every day, it's not like it ever got through to my mind, but I'd be walking home and this guy named Mark would get down on all fours 
And then this other guy named Jerry would push me over Mark and into some hedges in my neighbor's yard every day. Now, I'm not smart enough to think, well, it's probably going to happen today. Maybe there's another way home, whatever it is. But it happened every day. So one day, I finally got to the point, and I don't like to talk about a lot, a lot from my past, but it's fun once in a while. I'm standing. Really, folks, no fat in here. Um, I, I was walking home, and I was standing where I always do, and I knew Mark was behind me, and I knew Jerry was in front of me, and I knew he was going to push me down. And uh, so I did something weird. I kicked back and got Mark right in the, in the belly. And Jerry saw it, and he started running away. And I caught him at the corner. They never picked on me again. Because when we see people getting hurt, especially if it's one of our kids, or our grandkids, or somebody that we love, it upsets us. And we want to protect them. And we want to step up. And whatever they need, we want to help them with, don't we? If you don't, I don't want to be friends with you. Because I would do anything for my kids, especially if I knew somebody was picking on them. So in this passage, and I'll make sure I have the right step up here. I'm not used to standing behind a box. But in this passage, the dad is basically, he has this child. He's taken this child to whoever he could. Remember like the lady that had been bleeding for years and years and years and she came to Christ? She spent all her money. That's probably what this dad has done for his son because he loves his son. And he wants to help him. So in this passage we read that the dad brought the, the son to the disciples. And they couldn't cure him. They couldn't help him. These are the 12, the 12 disciples. And they were sent out two by twos at different times, and they cast out demons and that. But they couldn't help this boy. Now, I want to ask you, first off, what do you think this dad was thinking when he went to Christ? Any ideas? Let me make it easy for you. I'm going to remember the step. If I walked up to you, and you were just walking down the street, and I said, tell me who Christ is to you. What would you say? See, this is your part. You can answer it. I told you I'm different. I'm a lawyer, but I'm a teacher. Who is Christ to you? Tell me. Savior. Savior? My protector. Your protector? Your rock? Even though you paid less to get in, you guys can answer Yes. Best example of how to live the life we're in now. Best example for living the life we are in, that we're in now. To have him as our our example. Very good. What else? Yeah. Redeemer. Redeemer. Anybody else? You got good answers. Yes. Teacher. Teacher. Very good. Because a lot of people, even if they don't go to church or anything, they think he was a good teacher. Good. Anybody else? Can we get squeeze in one more? Shepherd. Huh? God. God. Shepherd. Shepherd. Very good. Very good. I want you to know that there's some people today who don't believe that Christ ever existed. They don't believe in him. They don't want anything to do with him. Well, can I tell you that Christ did live on this earth? Okay, he is the son of God, but he did live on this earth because... This dad knew he did because he took his son to him. And I don't know really what all he believed or understood about Christ, but he, he knew that that was hope, that he could take his son there and help him out and get help for his son. But the people who say, well, I don't believe in Christ or, or that, do you know that there's individuals, not the Bible, just the Bible, but there's writers who weren't even Christians a great Jewish historian named Josephus wrote about Christ and acknowledged he was alive and that he lived and what he did. So if you're to the point of saying, I don't know if I really believe in Christ anyways, that he's the son of God, that type of thing. I can tell you, this 
guy, I don't know how much he understood about Christ, but he knew he existed. And he, and he knew that he had healed other people, so he at least wanted to take his son there and see if he could get help for his son. Does that make sense? You know, when I'm looking at this passage, and I'll read it to you, it's in Mark chapter 9. Like I said, it's a passage where he took his son. Now that I spilled my Bible on the floor, I have to refind it. Mark 9, 20 through 27, we're just going to look at chapter, or verse 24. Like I said, the disciples, they brought the child, the son to the disciples. They couldn't do it, took it to other people. And so they come to Christ, and the father does. He bypasses the disciples, and he says, I brought my son to your disciples. They couldn't even help him out. And he explained how his son had been this way for quite a while. And so after Christ looked at his disciples with disappointment, it says that they brought the boy to him. When he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion. And falling on the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he, the father, asked, Christ asked his father, how long has he been doing this? And he said, since childhood. It has often thrown him both into the fire and the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. This is the neat part. He, the dad says, Immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. I don't know how much he knew about Christ, how much he believed about him. But he believed or had at least enough hope that he brought his son there so that he could at least try to see if Christ could, could help him. It says when Jesus saw that a crowd was starting to, uh, to come up or gather, he rebuked the unclean spirit saying, you deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. After crying out and throwing him into the um, terrible convulsions, it came out and the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them thought he was dead. And he took the boy by the hand and raised him up. Like I said, there's people today that they try to say that God doesn't exist, Christ doesn't exist, he was just a good teacher, he was a nice religious person, but that was about it. So I don't know if you're here today and you say, Tim, I gotta tell you, I, I just don't know. I just don't know about Christ and, and who he really is. You may have heard a lot of stuff over the years about him. You may have gone to Sunday school class, maybe to church for a number of years, and you hear things and you say, well, I, I think I know about Christ. I know some stuff about him because I've read about him. Any of you guys ever do research on famous people? Like who? Throw out a couple names. Like I researched Churchill. Phenomenal guy. Had some shortcomings, but I, I read a lot about him. Lincoln. Loved, loved reading about him. Do you guys have a hero or somebody that you've looked up to and you read about them or you read about them for years? Charles, Charles, Finney. Finney. Charles, Dr. Charles Stanley. Yep. Charles Stanley, Charles Finley. Maybe I should have had a Charles name and I would have been somewhat sane. I don't know. <laughs> Who else? Who else did you study? Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey. Football, right? Baseball. Baseball. I told him I was challenged with, with the sports. <laughs> See? Anybody else? Who did you study? Maybe even as a kid. Houdini. Houdini. Very good. Who do you think the kids study today and read everything they can? There you go, Taylor Swift. <laughs> now let me ask you this. Tommy, Houdini, Finney. Do you know a lot about them? At least did you when you studied about them? Do you think these kids today know about everything about Taylor Swift? Oh. I think so. 
Now let me ask you this. Did you ever meet Houdini? Did you ever meet your person? Yeah. yeah. I didn't think you were that old, but I just asked him. Just checking. Oh, there you go. Well, I got a, I got a picture of him in my pocket sometimes on a penny, but that's about it. What about Tony? You did. You actually met him. See, most people study about people that they want to know about. And they read a lot about them. And maybe this dad did that. Maybe he read a lot about Christ, heard a lot about Christ, whatever it was. But it was just head knowledge. But when he brought his son to him, he met Christ like you met Tommy. For a lot of us as Christians, we have a lot of head knowledge about who Christ is. And a lot of the answers you gave, and all of them were great, I want to ask you, all those answers, could they have possibly just come from a Sunday school lesson, or church service, or reading the Bible, and you know a lot about Christ because, shepherd, different things that you quoted. You know a lot about him, but that dad knew him. The first church I ever pastored was what they called a church plant. Ever hear that? What is it? Well, it's an avocado. Yeah. I went to a city that didn't have a certain denomination, and we go to church. We planted a church there. And it was great. It was exciting. It really was. I had, a, and I talked to somebody before the service. Whenever I pastored, I usually worked outside the church. One, because then they don't have to pay me, and I'm worth every penny at that point. <laughs> it's really good. But the other thing is, they always had more money to reach out to the community, to help needs, to do different programs because of that. And that was just me. That's just what I, I like to do. I had a guy from the school board because I, I worked at the school district. His name was Russ, and he was coming to this little tiny church plant that we did. And in that church, we had offers and we had all the calls and things like that. They used to do that in the old days. But anyways, Russ, at the end of the service, prayed that he would truly know Christ. This was his statement. And folks, I gotta tell you, there's a few things that happened in my ministry. They're just, they're right up there. He came up to me after the service and he said, Tim, you know what? Until today, I've known a lot about Christ. I've known a lot about Christ. Because he had heard it in Sunday school and church and different things like that. But he said, today, I know him. Folks, I got goosebumps when he said that. Today, I know him. And folks, the greatest thing that we, any of us could do as Christians is not to know a lot about Christ. I mean, that's great. If you know Christ, you should read the Bible and learn all you can about it. But the greatest thing is when you can say, I know him. And he knows me because he's there every morning when I wake up. And when I go to sleep, he's there. And when I have tough times, he helps me through it. That's what Christianity ought to be about. It ought to be a relationship with someone who loves you more than you can ever fathom. Amen. And even if you've had people tell you you're worthless, you don't, you're, you're dumb, which I had a lot of these words growing up, my Christ says to me, I love you, I care about you, you're not some cruddy little Kennedy half dollar. I'm helping you to become pure. And that's all on him to help me do it. I just simply need to ask. Folks, I'm just asking you today. If you're coming to church, you've been coming to church for a long time, and you say, Tim, you've hit it right on the head. I do, know, I do know a lot about Christ. But you know what? I've never met him. I've really never met him. 
And I'm telling you folks, it's the greatest. Not that everything goes peachy after that and you learn smoke blowing bubbles. But you have a relationship, a friendship, with somebody who every so often, quite often, will tell you, I'm so proud of you and the growth that you do and the time you spend with me, not as often as you should, but the time you spend with me in prayer and reading the Bible. And even when we need correction, he does it in a loving way because he's looking at us and, and saying, I want you to be that coin, 99.9%. Here, which probably isn't gonna happen until we get to heaven. But folks, Russ hit it on the head. I knew a lot about him, but today I know him. And he went back to the church, denomination I won't say, because he felt God was calling him back to his home church so that he could help other people not just know about Christ, but get to know him. And folks, it's the most exciting thing you'll ever experience in your life. It really is. And so I want to ask you, as we close in prayer and Kay comes up and, and we have our closing hymn, just take a, a, a second and say, you know what, Lord? I really do. If it's possible, if it's at all possible, that I can truly get to know you and realize how much you love me, help me, help me to do that today. Let it be real, let it be exciting. Not just coming to church and meeting friends, and that's all nice, but let it be exciting. Let my life, my, my Christian life be exciting. Amen. And just, just ask him, whatever it takes, let me know you're real. Mm -hmm. Father, I just ask, I thank you for each and every person here because the visitors who have meant so much to me and these, um, the individuals at this church who have accepted me and allowed me to um, even bring a message today. I just thank you for the opportunity for us to be here and I also am excited about the opportunity for us to leave here different. If there's somebody who's always wondered, I don't know if he really existed or not, well, I've studied about them, I've read a lot about them. But if there's a chance that they can meet you, because there's, if you have an idol that you've thought about or learned about, studied about, and you get to meet them, how exciting is that? And then when they turn out to be exactly what you've heard that they were, nice, loving, caring, genuine people, that's even more exciting. And so, Father, I just pray that as we have this closing hymn, and even right now, some people will say, Tim's hit it. I read a lot about you. I truly believe that you did live and that you do exist. But Father, I just ask that you'll make it personal, that they will sit here today and say, I don't know what happened in that service, but man, I'm, I'm leaving different. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you.
As we leave here today, and I use this for the kids, the only way to get this way in a Christian walk is you've got to let Christ in your life and help, help you do it. Because I've got to tell you, folks, I've tried to put a lot of things over the years, but when I've invited him to be a part and help me, total change, total difference. So even though I talk to the kids about this, how about if we all go out of here and be with Christ and say, can you help me be this way? Kennedy have dogs, I like it. They're neat. But if I can be this, whoa. <laughs> have a great week. Bless you. Listen to some beautiful music by Kennedy.